Question 14 from Paper 2 of the 2024 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A technician sets up the following circuit. You can see it there, it's got a dotted box around it, which means we're looking at an EMF and the internal resistance of that battery. It's attached to an external resistor R, which is a variable resistor, and it's got the ammeter to measure the current. The technician uses readings of resistance R and current I from the circuit to produce the graph shown. And here's the graph which, which is produced. You can see on the y-axis is the reading of the resistance, of the external resistance. And on the x-axis, you've got this relationship 1 divided by I. It's a straight line and it passes through uh, that part of the graph here, the y-axis or the r-axis. It's a straight line. Now, what's the question asking us? It says, conservation of energy applied to the complete circuit gives the following relationship. Capital R, the external resistance, is equal to E divided by I minus R. And this relationship is in the form of the equation of a straight line, Y equals MX plus C, which we learned in a maths class. And for one mark, it says use the graph to determine the internal resistance of the battery. And for two marks, the EMF of the battery using the graph. Now let's go back to the original circuit to see where the energy considerations come from. If we're in a circuit like this, we know we can look at each component and turn and put in our V, I and R to determine the potential difference across it. Same with the internal resistance here, V, I and R. Fill in the details, the resistance for the internal resistance is small r current through is I, and therefore the potential difference dropped across it must be capital I times small r. Likewise here we've got the value of resistance is R, the current is I, and therefore the potential difference dropped across it is I times R. Now we look at the energy considerations, we know that the EMF E has got to be equal to the sum of these two potential differences. So the EMF E has got to be equal to I times big R plus I times small r. That's the energy considerations. Now, we want to arrange it in terms of that equation. Although we've been given that equation, I'm just showing you where that equation comes from. So if we take the IR, or just leave the IR here, and take the I small r over the other side, it becomes E minus I small r equals I capital R. I'm just going to swap these two, two sides round. So we've got IR on the right-hand side, and that's going to equal to E minus I small r on the right hand side. Divide through by I and we get R is going to equal to E divided by I take away small r. So we just put this one upon I in a bracket all by its own and put E in front of it. We can see where that equation comes from. That's the equation all rearranged. And we're asked to equate that to the equation of a straight line Y equals MX plus C. And we know the M is the gradient part, and that's going to be equivalent to the EMF. So there's something different for you. In this type of rearrangement, the gradient of the graph is going to give you the EMF. The place where it cuts the Y-axis or the R-axis is going to be equal to minus the internal resistance. Minus internal resistance. So we can go straight to the graph as follows. And we know the place where it cuts the resistance axis is going to be minus the internal resistance that's that point there so we can put that statement down here it cuts the line cuts the r or the y axis at position minus r and of course that's the c and the y equals mx plus c constant so if we look very closely at that you can see it's going to be minus 3.8 so right away we can put down the following we can say that uh, minus uh, r is going to equal to minus 3.8 ohms. And therefore, the internal resistance of that battery is going to be 3.8 ohms. It's just the place where it cuts the R-axis here. Now, we didn't have to do the equation work for that. You could have actually guessed that. Uh, but that's the, the official way to do it then. So the internal resistance of the battery is 3.8 ohms. Now, what about the gradient of the graph? The gradient of the graph, as we found out, is going to give us the EMF of the battery. So we look at the following, the gradient is going to give us the gradient M is going to give us the EMF of the circuit. So to work out the gradient we just go to two convenient points. I'm going to start at the point 2 point here. So it's going to be uh, point 2 and ending in point 6 and 0 
up to 7.6. Each little box is 0.2. So what we've got here then is we've got uh, the change in the x-axis and the change in the y-axis. And we know the gradient of a graph is just that. The gradient m is equal to change in the y divided by the change in the x. So in this case here, the change in the y is going to be 7.6. And the change in the x is going to be 0 0.4. 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. So for the gradient, is going to be, if you do that in your calculator, you're going to get 7.6 divided by 0 0.4 and you're going to get a value of 19 volts 19 volts just to prove we've got the right units we change the y-axis going to be uh, ohms and of course the change in this is going to be uh, one, one over amps so you're going to end up with a, a unit of volt so the gradient is going to be 19 volts so for those two things we've got the gradient 19 volts and the internal resistance is going to be 3.8 ohms now the last part of that question is asking us to work out the 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 short circuit current. Now the short circuit current happens, if we go back to our circuit again, the short circuit current happens when the terminals of the battery are short circuited. The wire. So you really think the only thing you've got in that circuit there, that short circuit, is the EMF E and internal resistance I. So the short circuit current I is going to equal to the EMF, which we've just found out, divided by the internal resistance of the circuit. So we come down here, we can work that out, that the short circuit current, I short circuit, is just really equal to the EMF divided by the internal resistance of the circuit, which is going to be 19 volts divided by 3.8 ohms, and therefore the short circuit current is going to be equal to 19 divided by 3.8, so 19 divided by 3.8, and that's going to give us 5. So we're going to get a short circuit current of 5 amps. Now we could have actually got that from the graph, because if we look very close at the graph, we can see at this point here, uh, 1 upon i is going to equal to 0 0.2. So just to put that in there for you, at this part of the graph, we've got 1 upon i it's got to equal to 0 0.2. So therefore, the current I is going to equal to 1 divided by 0 0.2. And of course, the current's going to be equal to 5 ohms. So whichever way you do it, you're going to get the short circuit current, sorry, to be 5 uh, amps. Question 14 continued, part B. The technician now connects a second variable resistor in parallel with the original variable resistor. And for two marks, we're asked to state whether the short circuit current for the circuit will be greater than, less than, or the same as the value determined in A part 3. And we'll have to justify our answer. Well, we do know the how to work out the short circuit current. The short circuit current is going to be just simply equal to the EMF divided by the internal resistance. And we get that from this situation here. Because the short circuit current is when you get the two terminals of the battery and you short circuit, you connect a wire along there like that. And you can see that in this blue part of the circuit, there's only the internal resistance and the EMF of the battery E. And therefore, the current that flows in it, the short circuit current, is going to be just simply the EMF divided by the internal resistance. Now, if you add another resistance parallel to that, you're not really changing anything at all. So, really, the short circuit current is going to remain the same. So, the short circuit current, in this case, is going to be the same as the value you obtained in the previous one, which is 5 amps. Because you're not affecting the short circuit current, the short circuit uh, circuit at all by adding the resistor in parallel. The if you short circuit the terminals, you're just going to get the EMF E divided by the internal resistance R, and it's always going to equal to the five amps.